Yo, what's poppin' my people? It's your boy Crooks the Great, aka CTG, and I'm back at you guys. Bro, get up. Yo, what's poppin' my people? It's your big homie Crooks the Great, aka CTG, and I'm back at you guys with another banger of a UFC 5 video. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use footage to find out tendencies of your opponents in UFC 5. Now, in order to do so, we're going to be breaking down the title fight that happened last weekend at the ESFL event. And that was B3 Wavy taking on Josh MMA. So we're going to be breaking down B3 Wavy and his tendencies. Um, so I'm going to be showing you guys really how to use footage to find tendencies in opponents, right? Because I feel like this is something that's not really talked about a lot that can really help you to elevate your gameplay in UFC 5 if you're looking to do so. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get it started. Um, I'm going to let the commentators do their job. You know what I'm saying? You guys are going to hear the commentators, Bruce Lee, Robin, I'm a boxer. But I'm going to pause it throughout the fight and show you guys when I'm picking up on tendencies that B3 Wavy is doing striking good grappling what did they who did they select boxer who's in this octagon here tonight for the main yeah. event oh, five, five right. round, so boys. islam again versus dustin poria and these guys just Ooh. getting right to it just right. going this one may not go five rounds as i can see the pace of this fight already b3 wavy just coming out just throwing everything already everything in the kitchen sink here but dustin poria can handle that with ak josh so let's see what happens here oh. and a huge head kick already Man, these fighters going back and forth, taking some huge damage already in the first minute of the first round. Yeah, such a different pace in that last oh. fight. Look at that. All right. Now, I've already picked up on multiple tendencies, right? So, uh, B3 Wavy, he likes to use the, the jab from the outside. He likes to use straight strikes from the outside to use that long reach of Islam, right? He's doing that because he does have a reach advantage on Dustin Poirier. He's trying to keep him off at a distance to kind of just... Throw something out there to threaten uh, to threaten Josh, right? He's threatening him with the with the jab from the outside, and then when it gets real tight and in close, he's starting to throw hooks. He likes to either throw the lead hook or the rear hook. He likes to work those hooks when we're in close to try to get the heavy damage of Islam Makhachev, right? But one other tendency that I that I seen that could be a thing going forward is you seen him throw a combination. And then right after he felt like uh, he felt like Josh was going to pull or try to answer with something, so he immediately pulled back right after his combination. So those are already things that I've already picked up on, and it's not even out of the the first minute of the first round yet. So let's see as it, we go along if this becomes a, a a tendency that he does over and over and over again. Pull counter. They're coming after each other right now with technical defense, with backsways, and Islam Makachev has been a favorite tonight. A lot of fighters have been picking him, and Dustin Poirier is my guy, and that's a lot of power on the Ooh. inside. Wavy's got to be careful. Yeah, it's no slow cooking in this fight. These guys turning <laughs> the heat up. Turn hey. it up. And then here we go. They're keeping it going. I mean, if they keep fighting at this pace, we're going to see, we definitely going to see a knockout here. B3 Wavy, they going for it. And I mean, I could imagine... You know, we talk about jitters when you get into the ESFL for the first time fighting down on the undercards. Imagine if you in the main event fighting and defending your title, Bruce. That's like, crazy, man. Boxer. I was just about this. I was thinking that while you were saying, I was like, imagine the pressure of ESFL. Then imagine the pressure being turned up all the way, all defending the way. your belt in front of the crowd. I mean, I can't even imagine the emotions you're going to have to control in there. Yeah. Now, I wanted to pause it here because of what Bruce and I'm a Boxer just said. This is what exactly why I broke broke down this fight this fight specifically, because this is the highest of the high level players. You feel me? And they're in a pressure situation where they're just going to be fighting off instinct. They're not going to be using. They're not going to be sitting back, you know, going all willy nilly trying things out and stuff like that. It's the truth. So that's exactly why I broke down this fight. But I also want you guys to see. What I mentioned earlier with the tendencies that I picked up in the first round, he's been doing it over and over and over again. So that's how you know that they're that that it's a tendency for somebody when they do something and they repeatedly do it over and over and over and over and over again. 
And that's when you're watching footage, that's what you want to pick up on. Those are what we like to call tendencies. When people do something repeatedly throughout a fight. So right here, you see Wavy has thrown a lot of straight strikes out. He throws a lot of straight strikes. And then when he sees Josh closing that distance and kind of crashing into him, he's throwing the lead hook. So if you were, if or in my case, if I was building a game plan around B3, I would know, hey, from the outside, he's going to be using the jab straights. He's going to be using jab hooks if he's trying to crash in against me. And he's going to be, if I'm right in close quarters with him, he's going to be trying to look to start his combinations off with a hook, either with a lead hook or with a jab rear hook or something like that. And that's how you formulate a game plan. So he's adding in something a little bit different too. He has, uh, he's actually ducked and he's actually slip countered as well. So that's also something that you have to keep in mind as the fight goes along is does he do that multiple times? Is it, it, does it look like that's something that he's trying to implement against Josh, right? But things that we already broke down in the first round, you could see he's doing it over and over and over again. And those are what we like to call tendencies that we want to build game plans around. Turn the volume to max and just go. <laughs> I mean, can you, I mean, we used to do two 300 fights in preparation just to fight each other in the esfl i mean i yeah. wouldn't even go to sleep right right man Woo. round one look at this they just throwing this leather that's all i hear just leather being exchanged you know but what's technically happening in this fight so we got a hurt there of josh and you know and dustin poirier and beef three wavy just been putting on some damage and going for a turning takedown and he all right, I want to pause it right there because I want you guys to go back and re-watch how he set that up. He set up his takedowns by throwing a jab first and then shooting for a single leg. And it caught Josh off, uh, off balance and he was able to get a takedown. This could be a way that he is trying to get and initiate grappling, right? And this is a very commonly used thing. A lot of grapplers use this. They'll, they'll pop off a jab to try to get you engaged in a striking fest or make your mind think hey you know what he's going to strike me and then they shoot for a takedown and they get an easier takedown because you're not anticipating them going for a single leg or a double leg so it's very crafty work from b3 right there and as the fight goes along you want to be trying to pay attention to does he do it again because if he does it again then that means if if i let's say in my case if i was to fight him this is how he's going to try to take me down so these are little things that people don't notice in fights and that people don't pay attention to that'll really give away strategies on how to beat high level players gets it round one man it might solidify and do it you know so right here as well we're going to be studying what he's doing in these grappling situations does he allow a certain position does he go for certain submissions is he going for ground and pound over control or is he going for control over ground and pound or what is he trying to do right here you know, a good job in the eyes of the judges here. And he's going for the Ooh. darts, Bruce. This is Ooh. dangerous. It is. And he's got the stam advantage. Oh, two okay. ways. He's he got just, the fake. Oh, he's he just, got it. He just. Uh. Whoa. Wait, second time. Oh. How second did he do time that? we've seen that. That was awesome. Josh survives. What? Look at the stamina, though. All right. So he went for a darts choke right there. So that means if he gets him, if he gets Dustin in the same position again, more than likely, he's going to try to go for that same submission. He is. He's going to try to go for the same Dar's choke because now we know that that's a submission that he likes, right? So that's a tendency. So if you run into B3 Wavy online and are in ranked championships or you, you fight him in a league fight, just know he does feel comfortable getting somebody in that Dar's choke from Sprawl. So another tendency that we picked up on. They're What's just happening? racing and getting lucky. I think you race and you just get a little lucky sometimes with those races. Man, so you get your stamina drained and then <laughs> you race right when you know your opponent is getting ready to submit and you right. win. Right. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Wow. Just timing, I think. Yeah, man. So we have to let Tree explain that one to us. All right. So getting a transition denial there from the top oh, and landing oh, down some huge bombs oh. here. We got oh. Josh landing another elbow and able to turn things around here at the end of 
the first round in. All right. So I'm pausing it here in between the rounds because I want to go over everything that we've already picked up on. Right. So we picked up on the fact that he throws a lot of jab straights. He throws a lot of straight strikes off at distance to try to keep you at range. When he when he feels like you're going to crash in, he's either going to throw a jab hook. And then when you are in close, he's going to use a hook. He's going to start off a lot of combinations with hooks to try to get that heavy damage in uh, inside the pocket. So those three things, I want you guys to keep those in mind as we continue watching this fight because they're going to play they're going to play a huge factor in the result of this fight. Man, if they keep fighting at this pace, Bruce, somebody getting cooked early. They are, and I'm I'm a little nervous right now for the contender Josh because he is very low on the stamina, I'm pretty sure. Um, going into the second round, he does have the recharger perk. That's health, though. That's not stamina. And uh, I'm going to see here what the stamina is coming in round number two because he's going to... Look at that. Look at that stamina in round number two. Wow. Yeah, you're right. So that's good. I mean, you know, anytime that you can get your opponent in, you know, drain their stamina while they are, you know, in a submission, that's going to hurt on their stamina. Okay, so, but now... It is now it's Josh um pushing the pace here and let's see what Wavy does here. He has a stamina advantage. Both of these fighters have taken damage and had their moments in the first round, but now it's the second round, a whole new ball game. What are you seeing early here in the second round, Bruce? I'm seeing Josh MMA. All right. Now I want to pause it right here because he, Josh, B3 Wavy is doing the same exact thing he was doing in the first round. He threw a slip strike in the first round. He's doing the same thing here. He's throwing the slip hook, all right, trying to slip straight strikes. He's still popping off them strikes, the uh, the straight strikes off at distance, still throwing the hooks, right? So he's doing everything that we've picked up on that are his tendencies from the first round. Now, the difference in the way that the round is playing out is the adjustment that Josh MMA has made. He's made a really good adjustment by keeping B3 on that back foot. He's making him feel really, really uncomfortable by walking forward, switching up the pace at which he's throwing his combinations and things like that. So it's really making B3 have to adjust. So now we want to pay attention to how does B3 Wavy adjust to this, right? And this is a th another thing that you can pick up on. When you make an in-fight adjustment after the first round, how does he adjust? So we're, we're going to see. Does he try to shoot for a takedown? Does he look for more slip counters? Does he try to walk forward? And this is going to tell us a lot about what he does when he feels uncomfortable. And it's going to show us areas that we could take advantage of, too, when if we run into B3 Wavy in ranked championships or in a league fight as well. So let's pay attention to the way that he combats Josh MMA's uh, adjustments. He wants to come forward and he wants to do damage, but he's getting peppered on the way in and that block. Is getting tested. Oh. Ooh, but he lands there. Josh, very confident. Coming after the champion with big shots. Yeah, huge shots there. And that head health from Wavy is in trouble. But Josh landing a nice sidekick. You know, noticing which way his opponent was not circling and then landing the sidekick. But, man, look at that sidestep into the clinch. Good job there from Wavy. Three minutes to go here in this second round. Both of these... All right, now I wanted you guys to pick up on what Boxer just said. So he's moving off laterally. That's the adjustment that he's trying to make. He's trying to, to exit out by, uh, by cutting a corner. And he's also willing to use that clinch. So what that's going to do is it's going to keep Josh MMA a little bit off at distance because he, he thinks he's going to be thinking, hey, you know what? I don't want to get clinched and either judo thrown into side saddle or get reversed onto the cage and then have to be in a grappling fest with Islam. So that's the adjustment that uh, Wavy has made so far. He's threatening with the clinch and he's trying to circle off and cut a, a corner to get off the cage. Spiders going back and forth here. A very technical, you know, seems like things slowed down just a tad from the first round, but they still landed some huge strikes here, Bruce. They really are. Josh is not afraid to take one to give one. And then Wavy's kind of moving, sidestepping, trying to connect on Josh on the inside and doing a good job. And then Josh kind of teeping Wavy back. But right now, they're just in the center in round number two early. And there's been a lot of damage dished out already early in this fight. Ooh. All right. Now, you see how, how 
uh, the adjustment that Wavy made, and this is something, another tip, you feel what I'm saying? And another tendency that I need you guys to understand, he adjusted by using the clinch, using the 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 good lateral movement that Islam has, and when he get when uh, Josh MMA gave up the position, gave up the pressure off of the cage, Wavy never gave it back. So he's standing still. He's like, hey, you know what? You want to try to walk in on me, try to get damage on me again? I'm not going to back up. You're going to eat something. And if you're willing to trade here, I'm willing to trade too. He's not allowing himself to get pushed back. So that's a tendency. He's not He's not just going to allow himself to be in bad situations. So once he is able to get back to the center of the octagon, you see he's not allowing Josh to do the same thing. By just standing still and being willing to trade inside the pocket. So that's a tendency. That's a tendency off of an adjustment of his. Nice combination there from Wavy. Now Wavy is applying the pressure and putting Josh on the back foot. Let's see if Josh can fight back to the center of the octagon. And look at these nice combinations coming out from Islam Makachev. But they're going to cause some stamina there. Ooh. And I like that little lead uppercut that Josh is able to find, even though when it gets blocked. So Makachev not able to get the takedown off of that leg catch there. And is, could it be Josh to get the takedown? He gets denied. <laughs> he tries. He tries to go for it. But Wavy's like, no, nah, you're not taking me down. And Josh yeah. still doing a good job, Boxer, of kind of standing right in his face, putting that pressure on him. And he's making Wavy react a lot. Yeah, Wavy is reacting a lot. We All right. Got to remember everything Whoa. that's on the line right here. Now, I want to pause it right there. I want to pause it right there because you see him. you seen Wavy introduce something new. He major lunged. He major lunged. He ducked and actually major lunged, I believe, off of the cage. He did it because it's something new. He hasn't done it, and it's an adjustment that might be a tendency for him because he's going to do it back-to-back -back times. He's going to major lunge off. He's going to get put right back on the cage again, and then he's going to major lunge again to land a clean counter lead hook to hurt Josh MMA. So this is something that's a tendency for him that he's going to do to mix it up. He's not just going to be circling off. He's going to occasionally major lunge off to regain the, the octagon control very, very fast. So let's see it. Yeah, Wavy is reacting a lot. We got to remember everything Whoa. that's on the line right here. And then that's a nice pivot. There it was. He was able to pivot. He was able to pivot lunge off. He landed the clean lead hook. So now you know when you go against B3 Wavy and you have him up against the cage... There is a possibility of him going uh, and, and major lunging off and pivot lunging off. So how you would combat something like that is you go down to the body. You go down to the body to hold him in place because if he major lunges off and he's blocking his head, then he's going to eat that body shot. And there's a high chance that if he slips into the body shot, you, he's going to get a body rock. You're going to get a body rock. So that's how you would combat that. But... It is a tendency of his to do that because he did it multiple times within a, a, like what 10 seconds, 15 seconds. So he can do that. It lunge there with a nice, very, uh, oh, and look at this. Look at that movement, but he pays for it, gets hit in the body. So Josh doing a good job of recognizing his opponent and where those body shots are and pushing his opponent against the cage there. Um, Man, Josh now applying the pressure. This is going back and forth. It really is. They are firing bombs on each other. Wavy's exchanging. Josh is exchanging. It's almost like they're fighting a three-round fight, but they're in a five-round war. <laughs> they might gas out if this goes later, but it doesn't seem like it's going to make it to the end. These guys are coming for the kill, and Josh is coming for that title, but Wavy does not want to relinquish it as we go. Into All right, so you see, overall, Wavy is doing the exact same thing he did in the first round. So... He's still popping off them straight strikes off at distance. He's using the hooks. He, I mean, he got a clean rock off the major lunge hook, but he's doing the same thing. He's just adding wrinkles in. Now, he's going to keep doing the same thing. He's already pretty much shown his card on how he's going to fight this fight. He's not really throwing too many crazy combinations. He's, he's sticking to his bread and butter, and he's getting the solid damage off. So what have we learned so far from Wavy? This is how he's going to approach a fight like this. This is how he's going to approach a lot of his fights. He's going to stick to his bread and butter 
And he's not going to change up much. So let's see if that really pays off for him in the end. When around number three, Boxer, this fight is is pretty wild. Yeah, it's 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 crazy because like you said, they're they're fighting a three round pace, but this is a five round fight. So at the end of the third round, if we go that <laughs> far, I would like to see what his stamina is. Me so too. it looks like fighters are like, look, taking a break, they done pressed actually, a lot of buttons over these. He actually didn't get a stun off that, but he did get some solid damage. So that was my apologies. Past two rounds. And now you're going in round three, but look at that nice that pivot nice. lunge replay. That was beautiful. And he landed so, a hook after that, too. And landed a hook. So that was round great. three, let's go. You know, both fighters have settled into this fight. You know, they've had two rounds to see each other's game style and, you know, Ooh. what they're bringing to this fight. So now it's just about execution. Who can get it done here? And right now, Seeing that right eye of Dustin Poirier hurt. So can Wavy, the champion, take advantage of that and he elects to go for the takedown and get stuffed, Bruce. Wow, All right. what a... All right, so there's something that we said in the first round, how he got his takedown from that jab into the single leg. He did it again. So that's, that's another thing that we're going to pick up on. That's how he likes to initiate his grappling. He likes to jab, shoot for a single leg, try to catch you off guard, and then get you down low play good job by josh and you're seeing wavy now starting to fight look do you see that little step back now one thing that rob is pointing out here is he's starting to minor step he did it once in the second round but it didn't really pay off for him but he's done it twice in this round with success on the first one so he's using those minor steps so he has that in his game as well as well as he's starting to implement the uppercuts that's an adjustment that he's making in this round that he wasn't really making in the last round he's throwing a lot of uh a lot of uppercuts to end off two punch combinations so let's see if that pays any dividends for him here in the third round back he's starting to yeah. step back yep. and then yes. fire that straight and fire that counter and it's working yeah all of those little nuances to get your opponent to miss and then you make them pay and so that's what wavy is doing and josh both of them having their times right here and and so man round three and look at there, landing a huge left hand there on the side of face that's hurt. And a couple more strikes on that side. And that doctor's going to start getting more concerned. As you can see, it's not quite <laughs> red, but it's orange. It's getting there. Yeah, it really isn't. And you're starting to see why Wavy is the champ. He's making better adjustments than Josh MMA. And he's fighting very confidently. Uppercut lands. Big body it shots. Is. Josh is in trouble. Grabs the clinch. And... Uh, all right, so you see right there what he got that rock on was that straight lead uppercut. The adjustment that he made has already paid dividends for him. Josh is not anticipating that he's still in that combination. The straight lead uppercut is a very, very quick combo in UFC 5, and it does a lot of damage if you eat it flush. So very clean adjustment. But you see overall, Josh is doing the exact or Wavy's doing the exact same thing he's been doing throughout this fight. He's making minor adjustments. But overall, the tendencies that we picked up in the first round are the same exact things he's using here. He's just having more success by adding in a little bit of a wrinkle by adding in the uppercuts. And you've seen him grab the clinch again, try to hit him with an elbow, trying to get that knockdown. But he's doing pretty much the same thing. And this is what I'm talking about, about picking up on tendencies. Uh, the champ is all over him, having a great round number three. Oh, but he eats an uppercut, Boxer eats an uppercut and it busted that nose all the way up and you just never know how quickly things can snowball and the doctor may become a factor in this fight i mean here it is so now it's just overall so no eye no nose there on, on justin poria hey, until you oh. get hit. and there it is a huge rock eye. there oh nice sway look at this oh huge knockdown there Oh, Wavy, and he gets it done defending his title, Bruce. Wow. And you see, that's the way he got it done. He threw a lead uppercut again. He had a lot of success with it in the round, in the third round specifically. And he was able to get the job done. But he got the stun off the jab rear hook that I told you that he loves to throw in the first round. So those are literally all the tendencies. <laughs> he literally did the same thing throughout the fight. So when you guys are watching fights like this and really dissecting opponents, this is what you have to do. This is what you should be doing. What does he throw repeatedly? What does he like to throw? What kind of adjustments is he making? 
because these adjustments, if you pay attention to them and these tendencies are what are is what is going to allow you to win fights against high level guys like B3 Wavy. But that's it for the video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you guys have any questions on anything that I broke down or how to break down certain fighters, or even if you guys have certain fights that you guys want me to break down to find tendencies for you, please drop a comment in the comment section. I'm going to be answering every single comment on this video. But until the next time, guys, take it easy. Be safe. Enjoy the rest of your guys' day, afternoon, evening, depending on where you guys are watching this from. And I will see you guys in the next video.